que tal mundo. And away we go. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right. Beautiful. And away <laughs> we go. That was pretty good. Man. <laughs> That got a lot younger than I got a lot younger than I there. And better looking too. Yeah, and my eyes got a little crooked. Oh, looky. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little tilt to it, my boy. You got a little Asian look. There to you it. go. Did a wonderful job. Thank you, brother. And welcome back to another episode of the Getting Salty Experience. Ruffy, you know it, I know it. Cap over there knows it. Pete knows the only podcast that brings the firehouse kitchen table to you. And we got a good one tonight. You want legends? You want hard charges? This guy's been in more goddamn companies, more legit, <laughs> badass companies than you can shake a stick at. But before and we on get more that, roots than Santa Claus. Oh, before we get to that, Pete, <laughs> of course, uh, I'm joined by. Uh, guys. Hold on always. a minute. Oh, wait a minute. I got to introduce my, oh. my partner. Oh. Thank you, <laughs> Lieutenant Ruffy. Ruffy drinking the Tito's tonight, little Tito's and cranberry, right? Schmeerdorf. Does yeah, your husband what, drink? What, oh, you beat me to it, bro. <laughs> and producer Pete drinking the Blue Moon tonight. Shalom. How about Shalom? You know, always, Thank you, Blue Moon. We're brought to you by GettingSaltyApparel.com, where you can finally get shirts like this. The uh, when 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 I don't know what is this one called? The when men wore stuff what? and hooks were made with what? What the it's an fuck? awesome shirt. <laughs> when there was wooden ladders and iron wooden men. Wooden ladders and iron men, Pete, for crying right. out loud. And, of course, you could get your, your Bronx Ben shirt there and all the other great stuff we have, hats and other apparel and yep. uh, accessories. So go check us out at GettingSaltyApparel.com. Yep. First do it. Oh, you know box. it. First do your ladies box. And tonight, the word of the day is... Oh, hold on, oh, hold on. Oh, oh. Squid. Squid. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Well, Pete, give, him the new, give him the new uh, no more horn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's oh, the new shit, one. Pete. Oh, right. You just started. All right, let's, all right. Take it easy. Take it I easy. I think they use squid a lot. Squid oh, squid oh, squid cheese oh. man. The cheese man off for it. In cheese the man. room, I love the cheese man. Love cheese it. Man's the man. All right, we got with us tonight, Captain Calamari. Welcome, everybody, Captain Calamari, Captain a hundred. Oh, oh, he just gave the sign. He was there just giving the, the gang sign. Is that the one twenty gang sign? Bro? Oh, there you go. Get the, uh, you got to be initiated. You got to oh, get there the company go. on there. All right, this guy started. In 1977, probably half of you guys weren't even born in 77. <laughs> Got on the job at 77, went to 94 engine. Is that where you started, Cap? 94 yes, engine? Is. Hunt's Point. The Point. Hunt's Hunt Point. Mickey, Hunt's you, had point. A, you had a lot of good meatballs and sausage up there, right? And Hunt's Point went to the market. <laughs> Maybe not a lot for of good then. stuff. Good for shopping. Good you for got shopping. everything you wanted in Hunt's Point. Yeah, man. Yep, yep. How about fires? Any way, any way to fires up there in '94 uh, engine? Lot, lot of vacants. Uh -huh. uh, still some good work. Uh, the very, very senior, real senior guys, and they were good guys to uh, get broken in. I was 25 years old. What did I know? You right. know they, they, they were just tremendous. I was in awe of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but they, they, they were older. They were older. I was like their. I was like their uh, nephew. Uh -huh. Any family members on the job? What made you go to the job? My father was on the job from 1939 Holy to 1960. Wow. The, oh, my father got on at 60. Yeah, he was an old timer. And a good friend of mine, his father, Bill Spinelli, was a lieutenant in 24 truck. All right. I, be I believe Bill... Uh, retired uh, as the captain of 158. 158. All uh, right. In fact, when I got the letter, because my father and I really didn't see eye to eye that well, uh, the first person I went to see was Bill Spinelli, and he goes, "Guess why? You know, you, you're being hired. And, you know, financially, it was the best thing that ever happened to me." Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. it, where it did uh, where'd your old man work? 
My old man worked while well, he was appointed in 39 to uh, 165 truck. And it was probably a farm out there then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But then. They didn't have hydrants, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> then, then he, right. Right. Then he went to, uh, I don't know quite the sequence. He was in 12 truck and in six truck. All right. And it was interrupted by uh, w WW2. And he retired out of 266 engine in Rockaway. And I remember going there and I'm, I'm going back. I was probably eight years old and Rockaway Playland was still there. And oh 266 had, they had two engines. Uh, 121 was in with them. And uh, the 47 was in with them also. It was wow. a massive firehouse. So now the firehouse that they're in now, right over the bridge, right there. Yeah, Where, yeah. So two right? two sixty six got the whole thing. Wow, wow. Right, I think actually, the, uh, the four seven still in there, though. I think, right? No, I think the four seven they built that new house. Oh, right, right, right. They're right. did, did, did in with uh, EMS. Correct. Yes. One twenty one, I believe. One twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in ninety four. You put a whole one year in, just about ten months. Ten months. Months. <laughs> ten months. Wrap it up. Not enough. Wrap it up. And you went uh, and a forty eight truck is there across the floor from ninety four. Right, 94. went right right across right the, the floor. Truck. All right, again, extremely, extremely senior. There's ninety four picture, and the guy in the forefront with the cigar, Jimmy McKenna, one of my first lieutenants, uh, became the captain of three thirty two. And uh, he was there for like ten years. He was he was there when they moved in with one seventy five, and I oh. think there was I think there was some growing pains mm. initially, and uh, he ended up in the four four battalion uh, as the chief. All right, and oh. you know where where oh, I, I where, you. where I ended up in you know one twenty with the four four. All right, but he he was a hell of a guy. Right. All right. So, he was he did was. The, the fire officers were unbelievable. Now, there was a lieutenant in 48, Tommy Anello, who became my captain when I went to 59 truck. Uh, and he's an old 31 truck guy with all, you know, Neary wow. and Kennedy <laughs> and Jerry Albert. All uh, right, the legendary Jerry Albert. Uh, and, you know, I, again, I was in awe, awe of them. I did everything, whatever, whatever they wanted me to do. I shut my mouth. Clean the pots. The senior guys cook, <laughs> which I looked at, and I became a firehouse cook. And I, one of the reasons was thinking that if they could do it, I want to do it. All yeah. right. And and one of the one of the senior guys in forty eight truck, Gene Hessler, God rest his soul, said to me, and it was probably. I don't know, 79, mid-79, he goes, kid, you would have really liked, or you would have liked it when we were really busy. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought we were busy. Yeah. Well, you were busy, but... Uh, we yeah. were busy, yeah, right, but right. not relevant to what so, they considered right. Right, busy. Right. Georgie so, Munch, who was a legendary dispatch. Bronx uh, dispatcher, right. told me that the three busiest trucks in the Bronx in the heyday with 31, 42, and 48. And that's who we ran in with 31 and 42 a lot. And then we also went uh, towards uh, 54. All right, we had to go over the Bronx River. And there was a little bridge there, and they used to call the Bronx River the moat. And at the time, 54 truck was number one in workers in the city. But they had pull boxes all along Bruckner Boulevard on both sides. So all night it was Bruckner Boulevard south southbound, northbound. All right, just going. And through. the senior guys used to say, "Over the moat, the Bronx River, we don't need our coat. <laughs> Over the moat, you don't need our, you don't need your coat. All right." But I caught some good, good. Uh, so, fires with, with so oh, oh, hold on. I wanted to say just before you start oh, with yeah. that, what when you when you went over there, did they break your balls after ten months? Like you still uh, no, you? not really, not really. They liked me. They liked me. You know, three guys came with me on the order to uh, ninety four, 
and they shipped two of them out to 54 and they kept me. So they, they, they liked me. All right. In fact, they you were cooking. Me. Of course they liked you. They hooked me up to <laughs> with the old Atlas light belt. They hooked me up to the tip of the aerial. Oh boy. And I guess they were going to bring the booster or a couple of cans uh, <laughs> yeah. out, out to me, but I got out of it. And I said, you know, I was skinny. I was wiry. I said, what's the big deal? What's it? And they liked that I got out of it. So, <laughs> so then why the, why the move from 48 to 59? And, well, and I did 48 for two and a half years. Uh -huh. And again, we caught good work. Uh, one thing I, uh, that differentiates the Bronx from Brooklyn, since I had time in uh, both places, is you had a lot of taxpayers in the Bronx. And Sunday night used to be taxpayer night. All right, so that that was good, uh, but they burnt the neighborhood down. You know, when I when I left ninety four and forty eight, all uh, right, to go to fifty nine. And I got to look, going at, off? I gotta look <laughs> at my timeline, which was right, in gotta, August, August, August of eighty one. Right, the firehouse was the only occupied building on our block. Oh, really? my God. Yep. They were so, all yeah. big tenements, five, six-story tenements. It was the only thing. And they burnt these buildings several times. So right. we were going into vacants with no marble treads on the stairs. We would be duck walking on, right on the the, uh, the railings. Uh, there was all the wow. classic signs of collapse, diagonal cracks, doorways out of plumb, holes in the floor. And I am just astonished that we didn't get killed in a collapse. Yeah. Yep. All right. So as so I told Louie earlier uh, when we talked today, you know, I was chasing the fire. And the fire shifted to the West Bronx. And you would hear all these jobs come in, 56 truck, 33 truck. At the time, 56 was in with uh, 42 engine. All oh, right. They, they didn't nice. make their big move. And uh, the circumstances of the move, uh, which involved the union delegate in 56 and a, a newer female member in 42 engine, necessitated 56 to go in with the division. And obviously, they never moved back. All right. But you would hear, you know, you would hear the boxes. And Tommy Anello, again, my lieutenant in 48. When he became the captain of 59, he was taking a lot of the 85 engine guys also up with him. And he called me up at home, and he and I got along fabulously. And he's probably the best person I met on the job in all my 36 wow. years. He was That's a tr 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 tremendous fireman. He was a good-looking guy. He, he was charismatic. And he said, I got one spot open in 59. Do you want it? And I went there. So but, you, were chasing, you were chasing fire, basically. We got, was, we got a good looking picture of that guy. From I, I, was chase, I was chasing fire, but that's where the fire was. All right. And it was, it was one of the better moves uh, that I made. So you're there for basically from 81 to 89. Correct. What, what makes you want to go to Brooklyn? At the, well, oh, a couple, a couple oh, right? A, a, a couple of things happened oh, in '86. Let me look at my timeline. Get right. your pages out. Yeah. All right. In was, that the, was that the Marlboro Men? There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you oh, know what it is? There you go. That's, oh, that's when we used oh, to run. We used squid. every. Every, you'd, you'd have 500 people at all these fire, fire department races. That was the turkey trot. All right. I, I was single. I still wasn't married yet. You got the curly uh, hair there. What's all right. But in January of 86, I got my leg caught in the aerial ladder rescuing a woman. And it got caught. The chauffeur, I took a woman out of the floor above the fire after taking some girls down the fire escape and then being chased off the fire escape and taking some guy who was standing on the fourth to the fifth floor 
fire escape railing ready to jump. And I took him down on the aerial. And this heavy woman was on the floor above. The fire's blowing out the windows. And I took her off. I needed help. Good friend of mine from 59, Jimmy Zadowick, who became a lieutenant in 44 truck, came on the aerial with me. And when we got her on the aerial, we're being burnt. And I told the chauffeur to extend the aerial to get away from the fire. It was the tip portion that was away from the bed. And he retracted it. And my leg was bent. Ooh. And I get on the handy talkie and I tell him, my leg is caught. Extend the ladder. He retracts it oh, again. My. That happened. Somebody else said that. That was Hash had that thing. Jimmy Ginty got caught also. But I'm on the rate, handy talkie now screaming, my effing leg is oh, caught. Sure. And it's crushing my leg. And I'm having visions of having my leg severed. Oh, my God. So the battalion chief, Jack McLaughlin, who just died recently, actually his son was... Greg McLaughlin, who died in the firehouse in 302 Engine, oh, Jesus, quite some time ago, 15 years ago or whatever, he jumped up on the turntable. They extended the ladder. They got the woman down. Rescue 3 came up. I slid myself down to the turntable. They three put me on the roof of a car. I have brand new pants on. EMS wants to cut the pants. Cut <laughs> I don't said, cut my face. No, no, no. Don't <laughs> cut the pants. Boom. <laughs> so I ended up having uh, crushed muscles, herniated muscle, bruised bone in my thigh. I didn't walk for three months. I Holy was out shit. for five months. You got lucky there, man. I got very lucky. I come back to work. I get burnt on the Grand Concourse, all right, which was in June of 88. I had just gotten married. I was married for six weeks. I think we got that picture, Pete. Right. Yeah, you got the um, burn right picture. Here, right up right here. Oh, my right. God. Right. Yeah, we, like we were the third truck in an H. All right, I think 33 and 56 were there. It was, it, was down, it was on the concourse. It was probably down near 186 or something. And we were the third truck. This was before the fast truck. And we were the first truck. The fire was in the A-wing top floor and it was going across into the b-wing and we were the first truck in the b-wing i think we had i think we had 46 engine with us and we crawled in and it looked like the smoke condition like there was a car on fire soupy right wow. real real dense but it wasn't really hot in fact i had an alternate breathing device <laughs> Allegedly. And, but <laughs> since I couldn't see because of the density of the smoke, I crawled out. I put my face piece on, and one of the 59 members put a hole in the cock into the ceiling, and it was like lighting the torch. It just went lit up. Boom. And it lit up, but it was floor to ceiling. And we hit the deck. And I'm looking at this, and I'm shaking my head, and I'm saying, this is it. Yeah, yeah. And it ended up being like a fireball, and we were probably enveloped in, again, this is pre-bunker gear. Yeah, yeah. And we were probably enveloped for 15 or 20 seconds, and it blew out the door. All right, so three guys, I had my gloves on, three guys, Lieutenant Billy Spinelli, who was a 33-truck fireman, Cliffy Thompson, our chauffeur, and I believe the aide of the uh, 17th Battalion was up there. They didn't have their gloves on, and uh, they ended up never coming back. All right, oh, yeah. so wow. we, went, we went to Jacoby Hospital. They The burn center wasn't really established like it is today they let us out 
We ended up back in the burn center later that afternoon. They sent us home. Sent you home? They sent us home. Yes, they sent us home. And also, there's another picture that shows my face. My ears were burnt. My wrists behind my thighs. And they said, come back. It was either a Friday or a Saturday. They said, come back Monday. My wife is a nurse. I went back with her. The doctor, this guy Goodwin, the head of the burn center, wants to admit me. My wife says, I'll take care of him. My wife, he bred all of this. Oh, it was horrific. I had a condo, a co-op, a co-op in Glen Oaks and Queens. I would be in the tub. She would debreed be debreeding it, it would bring oh my God. tears to my eyes. I'm it sure. hurts so much. So uh, now how I'm out. To heal, heal, Captain. What, Pete? How, how long did it take to heal, sir? I was out for four months. Wow. wow. Now I came back to work, and <laughs> in probably around 88, they burnt the West Bronx down. They burnt the West Bronx down in 10 or 15 years. Because the size of the buildings there depopulated so many people. There was a population shift. So I said, you know what? This isn't going good for me in 59 with the leg, the leg in the aerial, in the burns. <laughs> it's time for a change. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And in yeah. the interim, I'm my lieutenant. He's looking at his notes. I'm looking at my notes. I can't look at I need the timeline. I, I'm just glad to see those burners didn't reach a ball bag because that's oh. really close. Man. <laughs> right. Well, I ended up like having two kids. Clubs. So I was yes, that was that was good. But in the interim, my lieutenant in 59 truck, Frank Pampalone, also known as Frankie the Firefighter, uh, <laughs> God rest his soul, became the captain of 111. He came back, and he was briefly the captain of 43 Engine, and Frank was a staunch, staunch truck guy, but he wanted to be in the house, and he wanted to finish his career off. And some captain from the fireboats transferred into 43 and knocked Frank out. So I guess Frank, in spite, uh, you know, in, in some anger, said... F this, and 111 was available. He went there, so I transferred it to 111. 111 but, was available, so he took it. <laughs> but, again, that's one of the companies when you're in the Bronx, you're hearing the jobs come in, and you're hearing all the streets. There's WNYF articles. So at the time, if I was going to go anywhere in the Bronx, it would have been to 111. And it ended up being, uh, I guess, career-wise, uh, the smartest move I made because it opened up the whole Brooklyn area uh, for opportunity for me. And when I had the opportunity after 9-11 uh, to go somewhere which i will parlay into you know when we get to the 9 11 uh portion of it you know i i went back to the 15. uh and, by the way uh cap uh, we're 24 minutes in so you could say the word fuck now because people give us <laughs> we're not yes. allowed to say but yes. minutes, we're not well, allowed. I, I use i use i use the acronym the letter <laughs> the letter right, but, you know, we're far enough in, you could say, fuck you, no. fuck you. Yeah, all, yeah. right. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> but I, I had a great time in 111. Uh, tremendous fireman, Kenny Connolly, the Duke. I don't know oh, if you're man. familiar with the We've yeah. talked about talk All right. Yeah, the Duke was, was there. Right. The Duke was the Gordon Bennett and uh, Archer Award winner and was in my groups. So I, uh, so I got to uh, work with. The Duke how about, uh, how about uh, Dennis Murphy? Was he Dennis there Murphy were... uh, was not there. I think Dennis was promoted. Went to rescue, or he went or, to R2. R2. I think he went to Rescue 2. No, he, he may have went to, he, he was probably a fireman in R2. Right. Do that. 
All right, but Dennis Conway was there, another legend. Another legend, yeah. One eleven uh, guy, and you know, I liked it. I liked the Brownstones. I really didn't have. Well, number one, I came from two truck companies that were aerials. Right. Right. There was, you know, forty eight was a rear mount, and actually, when I got to fifty nine, we had a tiller for a brief time. So I got to work in, but you know, the tiller, the rear mount, and also a tower. But I knew nothing about the tower and i took the rig out probably for six months straight just parked it in front of the firehouse and uh, flew the bucket because i wanted to become proficient with the bucket because in 111 the the tower is the perfect tool for the brownstones yeah all right and if you want in my mind if you want to work in 111 you want the ob in the bucket because we put the bucket up to the top floor. Right, and if right. the fire was up the stairs, the classic open interior stairs, you're the only person at the top floor. Yeah. That's because uh, there's no fire escapes on these brownstones. Is that no the case? fire? <clears throat> Look at Pete. No fire escape. Wow, most, what the fuck did most, Pete come out with that? Most, <laughs> most of them. What is Ray calling you on the phone? Hey, Pete. No, tell them there's no fire escapes on Pete, Most of them. <laughs> were built as PDs. I see. And when they converted them, when people legally converted them to MDs, most of the time they put sprinkler systems in it. Gotcha. But since probably through the war years and then into my time, the late 80s, etc., cetera, uh, they were probably illegal MDs. And yeah, these these people who trapped on the top floor, they they, you know, they had three options: they could jump out the rear window, they could die on the top floor, or hopefully one eleven truck gets them <laughs> from the bucket and, and, and from the bucket. Yeah, so, we got a know. couple of news clippings from one eleven there, Pete. Right? Yeah, Do we have a few jobs that the cat wanted to talk about? Here's one right here. Uh, that's the crash. That's that the, cool. that's the crash with with rescue two, and it's difficult to see, but right in the forefront, the the car that's between both rigs is on a hydrant. Jimmy Basil, oh, I see it. You know what? Let me uh, let me increase the contrast. If right, I can while Jimmy going Basil, around. legendary, one eleven lieutenant, one o two fireman was the officer was ejected out of the rig. Wow. He was actually underneath 111's rig. And I believe that if the car wasn't on the hydrant, Rescue 2 would have pushed that car on top or 111 up more and it would have crushed Jimmy Basil. Right. Yeah, that's what uh, Chief Bro was telling us. He was working. He worked that day. Yeah, I was. And I was. Not, I think I was promoted already. Yeah. All right. I forget the year. I got promoted in '94. <clears throat> All right, but uh, yeah. That, What's that? You know. We had another clipping too. That Pete. What's that one? Yes, uh, yes sir. Is that oh, from 111. Yeah. Well, leave, leave the accident one oh, for right. a minute. Just go back. Because I was able, when I was working, well, besides 120, had a very serious accident and turned their rig over. All right. And I was not working. And to uh, make matters worse, we had two buffs riding in the rig. That'll do it. And one of them was injured. They were photographers. And it was right before our centennial. And they were doing centennial uh, photos for us. So that didn't go well. But I was also at the accident, Louis, when 103 Who? hit a bus no, and, I was, and, I was and on like New Lots Avenue. I remember that one. I was gone already. And also uh, 236 hit 107 and knocked 107 over. Right, that was I remember that right. job. Yes, in, I remember into that. A, into a pole. It, yeah, it tree in a pole. Took, yeah. Right. Actually, rescue four was there. Cheese man was working, 
and they use the grip hoist to pull the rigs apart to pull 107 away from the telephone pole they were embedded oh, in to give them more room to get the chauffeur out. Yeah. All right. Actually, the chauffeur's father was a fireman with me in 94 engine. I think that that, that job, a couple of guys from 107 got out of the job from that. They though. may have. Yeah. Both, both, so. both of them were serious. So they, this rig accident thing is not uh, a pretty sight. And unfortunately, if you're not of the borough, the other boroughs tend to view you as the Enemy. Brooklyn Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> and it reinforces that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. But it's very, aggressive, very though, serious Brooklyn. stuff, though. No, we've talked about that too, right? Yeah, we, we talked about too that 120 truck with the buffs riding is when they stopped uh, all buffs riding on the rigs, right? Cap? Right, right. Yeah. That that, yeah, that ben, was ben a pleasant thing, that. and they ended up uh, lifting Larry Tompkins, my man Larry, Larry. Right? Larry. Yeah. and I had a big argument with Danny Butler, the 15th Division commander, about it, uh, and I says, "Well, I'm the one who approved it." If you're going to lift anybody, lift me. But he was pissed off uh, uh, with Larry uh, for something else, and Larry got lifted for like six months or so. But yeah, whatever, whatever. What what could they possibly do to us? I can't do it. What to can hurt you do? us? <laughs> I think. Right? What can I, had, do I had a nickel for every time I said, "What more can you do to me?" Especially when I was at. Two nine, well, I was in a right. Show. What what could they do? <laughs> I'm doing twenty five runs a tub. What do you want me? To, what can you do to me? What right. you gonna, they're gonna send you a slow company. <laughs> and you're sitting there doing, oh no! What? Right. <laughs> right. Oh shit. We got some more stuff here from uh, one eleven. Awesome. Yeah, there was there was a couple other. Yeah, what's that picture, Cap? All right, that's just the uh, store fire in between tenements, and uh, I am in the middle of that picture. We went. Here's my new boy. Here's my new boy, Samson. Samson, hey, nice. Samson, the mighty one. Oh, he looks like uh, right? he looks just like Otis. Nah, nah. Uh, no, no. But uh, besides, we cut the whole event. Nice hole to the left there. But we took the portable ladder to the roof, and then we went up and over and dropped it down uh, oh, no. the rear. Nice. So we went up and over. All That's right, all. but just you know, just looking at you know the bed star today is not the bed star, the do or die bed star no. <laughs> of my time, and you know it, I got there in uh, eighty nine, and it was like the height of the crack epidemic. Oof, and. I love crack. You know, the same thing. <laughs> the the, the same thing. You had boarded up cinder block brownstones, you know, all over the place. You know, you normally would have a block of brownstones with tenements on the corner, you know, like bookends. I mean, look at the building right to the left there, right? Look at the accordion gates. You know, you got gates everywhere. But we had, we had the open cab tower which we really liked. And if you were coming in for 24 and coming in for the night tour, we'd end up like at four o'clock in the afternoon with seven or eight guys on the rig. And guys are sitting on the turntable, no mask. Allegedly. No handy talkie. <laughs> but it was great. It Free was a Freelance. <laughs> yeah. Hey, right, hey, but they, they, they were tremendous firemen. Hey, Cap, somebody, I had a couple of birds calling me uh, this week. I don't know if this is right around that time, but I also have a list. I know you have 18 pages, you told yeah. me. Right? Legal size, not the regular size. Legal size, Legal right, size. right. <laughs> it's a little bit longer. But I have, somebody had mentioned something about the longest trench cut ever made. What, what are they, where is this, and when, was, when did that the happen? The only thing I could think of, because we did cut a lot of <laughs> trenches, uh, in the Bronx is when I was in 48 truck, 
and I don't know if this is what he's referring to, and I think I know who it is because he may have texted me, all right? And he, I think he's the covering <laughs> captain in the 15th now. But we cut two trenches on a taxpayer on Westchester Avenue, front to rear. And it was the one, right. and, only, and, it was the one and only time I've ever seen, you know, there was probably six, six saws going, and it jumped the first – the first one, and we cut another one, and it stopped it. And I think it was oh, really? it. Yeah, was yeah. It was, it was 14 stores. It was an L-shaped taxpayer, the whole block, and I think we lost six stores. So we saved eight stores. That's but okay. I've never seen a, a trench on a uh, taxpayer after that. Very good. All right. I just wanted to make sure I got that because he, he texted me. He reached out to me. I got a lot of – The little birdie? Yeah, I got a lot of little birds chirping. Right. The nut yeah. house, the nut house was wacky. The nut, we, we had a we had a good time. The the truck normally slept in the TV room right behind the uh, the rig. There wasn't a lot of room there. What's that, this? What's that, this? That, that Rudy Weinler, uh, who got the Daily News Hero of the Month. I remember that. For grabbing, it may have been Thanksgiving morning. If my memory sh serves me correct, all right, for a guy, a guy was hanging off a gutter in the back of a brownstone. And Rudy had the roof. It was a slight peak roof. And it was, it was snowing out. And Rudy was slipping on the roof, jammed the pike of the Halligan into the roof held on to the Halligan and pulled the guy up off the gutter onto the roof. Wow. All right. So this was the picture from the nut house. And there's Kenny Conley, the Duke, right, be, uh, right behind me. Where are you there? Which one are I, you? I, I, am, you? I am I am the guy holding the other end of the ads. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That handsome guy. You, look, you know what? I have to say, you look a little bit like Borat. You look uh, like <laughs> Borat. <laughs> nice. My wife, wife I was she is dead. It looks like Hall Oates. I used to run that. Well, they used to call us in the Bronx in 59. Me and this guy, John Gold, Vietnam vet, they used to call us Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> All right? Because they thought I'd look like Starsky and I had a little more hair than I do now. And this guy looked remarkably like uh, Hutch and Starsky and Hutch. Or, or some guys used to say, because John Gold was an unbelievable ball breaker. All right? Uh, Hutch, Starsky and Stupid. <laughs> well, we got another. We got another good one here. Uh, what was this? I, I, uh, I remember reading about. I remember reading this actual. This is the post, I think. Yeah. Right. I well, seeing this. I had either the can of the irons with one eleven. I think it was Nostrand Avenue, and our forcible entry store was out of service. <laughs> so we had to crawl up. There was a storefront with the apartments above. And we were in with 235. Mel Harper was the officer. I don't know if anybody remembers Mel Harper, black guy, great, great fire officer. <laughs> and they were selling crack out of this storefront and they locked the girl in like a steel plated cage. Nice. And somebody torched it. Ooh. The thing was red hot. It was glowing. Jeez. It was red when we got in there. And I used the torch and probably cut a two by six door that we bent over to stick the knob in, number one, to try to extinguish the fire. And then she, she was incinerated. But it ended up going to, I think, a third along. Yeah, I tell you, the torch is always a – it's a tough thing, you know, like to, either you're good at it or well, – you know what? Many, you many got, times. You got to check it. You know, I had the irons. I checked. Mm -hmm. And when I went to 111, I had 11 years on the job. Uh, so I wasn't a Johnny, but I was a junior man. 
So I checked everything while I was a junior man, and Jimmy Elson, ironically, was our first pro B after me. Is that right? Yeah, oh, he, wow. he, he, he went to a job. I, I was with him. We we're second due to 102, top floor job before, his, uh, before he uh, stood his first roll call. Wow. Uh, but when I had the irons, I checked all the iron stuff, and I always checked the torch. And I use the torch a lot. I use the torch a lot on uh, taxpayer gate the locks. Hockey locks, right? Yeah. 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 We had a, we were on Broadway. We had a store fire, and it was like this chain link gate that you could see through. Right, right, right. And we used the saw to make two vertical cuts. And I went along horizontally with the torch. And just cut the links. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We nice. Folded the whole thing, and we ended up, st- you know, sticking the bucket into the store to put the fire <laughs> out later on. But it gave us access, you know. And it was something different. It wasn't the normal roll down gate. Right, I used right, right. I used to like that diagonal with the uh, sort of with nice. the store and pull the uh, yeah. pull the slats. This was a little different. Wow. By but the way, getting back, get back to the girl uh, in a cage, is that frowned upon? You know, locking girls up in cages? Uh, <laughs> well, when, when, when crack was whack. <laughs> oh, that's an 80. You know, in, in, oh, in, oh, crack was you. whack. In, oh, my God. Right. In, in do or die, bed start. Hey, wait. Hey, All right, here thank you. you. There I, you don't, go. I don't know about this. What is the Widow. 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 It's too long. It's too long. Yeah, but gonna... all, all, all of those. Make, I, I like the old school one. I just want to go old school for a second here. There you That's go. That's classic. That's classic. Yeah. What the fuck is that? Well, you've been on so much that now you have classics. <laughs> ah, nice. I like where your head's at. There I'm, you classically, go. I'm classically almost out of my bottle of whiskey. I don't know how. Oh, I <laughs> Holy yeah. crap! Your mom's gonna be face. so mad. Oh man, she's gonna scream at me, bro. Yeah, with the but tip just, of the elbow. Just to go back to some of the firemen. All right, and besides the Duke, Rudy, Eric Weiner. Uh, I remember that right? guy's I name. Worked with, every, every you know, somebody thing. said, I don't know if it was Bobby Gallione, and it wasn't on the podcast, but I seen something recently, and he was talking about Timmy Higgins. Yep. And, and somebody said Timmy Higgins had the best instincts they ever saw. And I'll tell you, Eric was a terrific, terrific fireman, and he had great, great instincts. Yeah, we we used to talk about creative visualization, which I picked up from sports. And this is going back now, and you know, probably into the early nineties. And we and we tried to apply it to our job, and now the military is using that. And the fire department has gotten involved with the military to delve into it. And Eric and I were talking about it in the early 90s. But Eric was a terrific, terrific fireman. I remember I I had to be for years in a row. Yeah, I mean, in the early 90s, like you said, I remember he was going to Metal Day yep. every year. Yeah, I, I remember one, one. I think he was working, if I remember reading this right, and you, you probably know this, He was. I think he was working in the engine. He was working 283. And, and a kid the was, project. A kid was oh, caught on, yep. the, on, the, on, the, on the, the, window, the, the window bar or something, right? Yep. She was yelling, and our kid was caught. And he ran up there. He ran up there. He told me he found her. And you find a lot of kids, especially smaller kids, between the bed and the wall. He goes, he plunged his hand down. Boom. There you go. He may, he may have been using an alternative breathing device. <laughs> Possibly, allegedly. I might have right, heard allegedly. <laughs> and I think he stuck that into the kid's mouth and opened it up. Yes. Yeah. Yes, wow. and, and, and then, you know, the longer you spend on the job and the beauty of working in a lot of places like I have, this this circle completes itself. And he's on Livonia Avenue in the early 90s, which, 
know, I really didn't know that much about 120 then. Like I said, I, I wanted to go to 111. I had my mindset to not house 111. It was a good fit for me. And ironically, in 120, I end up responding to these projects all the time with 283. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's strange how that whole circle completes itself and the circle expands with all these places and boroughs you're working in. Uh, laughing like a circle. Yes. <laughs> circle of love, baby. Like the summer of love. It's, it's a circle. Oh, it's like a circle. Like <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know who said that? I think. Oh. Wait. wait I think this guy, hold on, Cap. I don't know if you've seen this guy before. I don't know if you've ever seen this no. guy. You were. You know, nope. I'm Chief Steve. I'm here to inspect that better not be fear on your breath. Line up in order. Dress right, dress. Go get a comb. Your hair's a fucking mess. Proper uniform is what I'm here to see. No getting salty shirts. They won't get past me because I'm Chief Steve. <laughs> Fucking rushed out. Well, we, what there, was a, there was a chief in the three seven. Hold on, we intro Chief Steve with oh, the I intro. Know, song. All right. Well, time. there's a there was a chief <laughs> in the three seven. We we pretty much got along with the three seven. You got to realize the two trucks in the three seven were us and one twelve. All right, and one twelve to go over there, the ant farm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was it was. A crazy place also. So Chief K would come over and visit Captain Frank Pampalone. And I don't know if you guys know Frank, but and Frank and I were very good friends. I, I worked with Frank longer than anybody else in his career, 13 years combined with 59 and 111. And I guess Chief K, he'd be all spiffed up and he'd have his tie and his clip. And he'd come over and they'd be up in the truck office and the door was closed. They would be screaming at each other. <laughs> we, Louis, you asked me earlier today about some of the funny stuff. We thought it was hilarious. But Cap, but Frank Pampalone, Frank wasn't taking any shit from it. You know, Frank was a 40 truck fireman, a 42 truck fireman, a three time Medal Award winner. Yeah, he didn't do it. He's not seen to Right. Him. No, he's not Sorry. taking any crap from these fucking idiots. <laughs> All right. So, oh, Brody <laughs> Pete, I'm sorry I slipped. All right. Let it out, Cap. Let it out. We, yeah. we, thought, we thought that that was, uh, that was pretty funny stuff, man. That, that, that was funny. All right, so you get promoted. Yes. You spend uh, 89 to 94 in 111, a couple of years. Right, yeah. Al almost five. Yeah. Well, I could have stayed there my whole career, though. Yeah, you get promoted in 94. Correct. Right? And you go to 150 truck as a well, lieutenant. Well, first, I, I, I probably covered, I was assigned to the 5 out. Right. All right, and actually, there's a story to that because we we're in flips, and at the time, Flips was in the rock. All right. I think it's over in Fort Totten now. And uh, being an old time hockey player, all right. And I also sent you a hockey picture. Uh, one of the more senior hockey guys who probably uh, was involved starting the fire department hockey team, Frank Nastro, was an assistant chief. Yeah. I also sent you guys a uh, picture from 79, the 18. All right. Where Ray Downey was. Ray, oh, yeah, know. Ray Downey was the captain of the uh, hockey team then. But Frank Nastro, whose son was a fireman 170 truck, uh, was an assistant chief, and he was at the Rock. And he sees me, John, how you doing? Congratulations. Thank you, Chief. He goes, where do you want to go? And I always like people asking me where do you want to go. So he whips out his pad, and I tell him I'd like to go to either the 12th Battalion up in Harlem since I didn't work there. Or the uh, five zero, and you know, here comes the order. I'm in the five zero. All right, so I covered in the five zero for a year. But during that time period, Von Essen was the commissioner. He renumbered the divisions. Right, right. I remember that. And now, 
whatever the the 13th and the 14th were combined. So now, since I'm covering, I'm also up in the 14th division. I'm in 115 truck, yeah, 325, 138, although I caught a good job in Left Rack City in 138, 136. <clears throat> yeah, I'm in all these places. All right, so I, I ended up UFOing uh, in uh, 150. All right, the chief of the five, the battalion commander, Ronnie Hansen. All right, old gruff guy. He was the captain of 11 truck back in the nice. day. And back in the day, 11 truck was very Yeah, those guys were doing Very work. busy. Uh, yeah, that was, was, City. One of the yeah best very, very busy. And Ronnie didn't like a lot of guys. Ronnie was a former Marine. He was a real gruff guy, but he asked me where I worked, and I told him, and he liked the companies, and uh, he, he he liked me, all right? He, he UFO'd me there, all right? And I, I took the spot there. And Came a hog. I, I was a hog, all right? But a hog. <laughs> my first day in the field of, as a lieutenant was the morning of the Watt Street fire, the John, the John Drennan fire. And I was working in 158 truck. All Stop right. And again, I've, I, I didn't work. I, you know, I'm a ghetto tenement, brownstone guy. I know nothing really about PDs. All right. And I get up early. I'm nervous. <laughs> My wife is up, and she tells me there was a fire last night, and two guys died, and one guy, John Drennan, is in critical condition. And I'm like, you know, holy f! All right, so I'm li I'm listening to the news channel on the way in. Right, I, I live out in uh, West Islip, and uh, I get to 158, and I relieve the guy. It must be seven o'clock. We get a job in a PD, first due. I haven't even written my my first oh, roll call as lieutenant. Yeah. No shit. All right. <laughs> but I'm looking at the building. 311 is stretching across the front lawn. It's this little cape with the dormer. The fire's in the dormer. And I'm going, yeah, this is, yeah, I grew up in Uniondale. I go, this could be Uniondale. All right. It was very, very odd. And it took probably six months or so to get used to it and probably till i went to 150 and seen how they operated uh south queens has overhead wires mm -hmm. which presents a tremendous laddering problem in my chauffeur well one of my assigned chauffeurs billy o'connor right the first job we get to with the overhead wires he drives the rig onto the front lawn Nice. <laughs> and I'm, um, what the F are you doing? And he goes, we're getting under the overhead wires. And I says, yeah, I like that. I like that, you know. And uh, I, I guess I became, well, I wasn't there that long, but I became proficient in the PDs. You know, the problem with the PDs is they, they became illegal MDs. Right, 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 right. Right, and you know they 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 have full apartments in the cellar. I had a job with three hundred one, uh, which I UFO'd for a couple of months before I was in one fifty, and we were still doing pull box running then, mm -hmm. and they were sending two and two. Mm -hmm. Now we were running our behinds off, and we get a pull box for Liberty and one eight three. It's in the summer. Uh, I don't know. It's probably like July, August, because it's real hot out. And it was probably it was just getting dark out, similar to I'm looking out my window now, similar to now. And we get to the box location. The smoke is banked down to the street. And it's all PDs. You don't even know what building it is. Right. So I go down the driveway of one building. You know, I have to make a, a uh, intelligent decision there. The fire is blowtorching out of the little basement foundation windows. It's a little cape, peak roof cape, cape two-story, 
I go around to the back. There's an entrance, the entrance to the rear, to the cellar. I kick the door in. The fire is blowtorching 20 feet in the air. I, uh, it's, in, it's incredulous. I nice. have the nozzle team pinned in the corner of the backyard. They have a combined two years on the job. Salty nozzle men, right? <laughs> I tell them, mask up. We're going to open the knob, hit this. I said, we can't shut this nozzle down because it's going to blow us back up off the stairs. They go down the stairs. We stop at the front foundation wall. Boom, the fire's right. out. I'm like... Holy crap, this is unbelievable. We come out, the chief of the 5-4, Dick, five. Dick Barr, right, just got there. He goes, Lieutenant, nice job. I go, do me a favor, chief. See those two guys over there? He goes, yeah. I go, that's the nozzle team. Go thank them. <laughs> yeah, I right. said, yeah, it, was, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It was yeah. incredible. So uh, you're at 150 truck for two years. And then all of a sudden you go up to 26 truck. Right. Up in Harlem. What time makes to, you make time to make a move? Time to make a move. You're like the, you're like the journeyman following yep. fire, bro. You're you, like, you know what? Well, you know, the running, the the running slowed down. <laughs> you know, the, some parts of Queens. Oh, check that out. Look, I'm looking at my uh, timeline. That's the timeline. Listen, right. While, while it's just so started, you know, in the, two, in the two years I was in 150, we did 4,000 and 4,200 runs. All right. And the running was good because it kept the guys, there's guys who work in Southeast Queens because it's close to home in Long Island. Right. But they didn't want to do that type of running. Thank you. And it, <laughs> And it kept them out of the better firehouses, and it was good. But I went up to Harlem. The order I went up there, there was a lot of availabilities. In Harlem? In Harlem, yeah. Shot. There was a, that, that particular order, there was a couple in, I think, 30 truck. There, were, there was maybe five or six, and I'm getting myself another drink. There was oh, probably... Nice. It was who, probably. By the way, before you do that, who was on the phone? Squid. Oh, oh the squid. <laughs> hey, Kev, wasn't your dad? I'm um, not dad. Uh, wasn't I, I, wasn't somebody was in your in, family? My dad was in 28 truck. Oh, okay. okay. Was great great shop. Yeah, Le yeah, yeah. Legend, the fire legend, factory. Legendary shops. Yeah, that All was right. 19, but I but I went to 26 and. It was great. It was, again, the two places I could have spent the rest of my career in, as opposed to the one I did, 120. 111 and 26. And 26. 26 yeah. was, it was terrific. It, it, it was, you know, the, the guys were great. That's a good I one. had a yeah. nice, not real ultra senior but you know what? Ten year guys, they were doing work up there. That's one. We had a great sorry, response sorry. area. We went up and down 110th Street, you know, which gave us access to the West Side. Right? It, it was tremendous. Was, uh, was Was Paulie Baldwin there when you were there? Paulie Baldwin was not. No. Oh, he went to rescue one at that time. That's right. Good. We, you know, I had some. Staggering jobs. I had a job on Central Park North, 110th Street, right across from the park. Massive, massive tenement. Two apartments going on the first floor. Out into the hallway. I looked at this. It's crazy. We, we ended up rescuing five people. We ended up getting a unit for it. But... The deputy, Tommy Dunn, he was from the 7th Division. Von Essen moved the de deputies around. All right, so it, it's at night. He goes, I'll call you in the morning. I go, okay. 
Cassano is there. Cassano's the chief of ops. He's at the job. So Dunn calls me at 7 in the morning. And I figure he's calling me for uh, to discuss the unit citation. He goes, yeah, Chief Cassano wanted me to pass something along to you. And I figured he's great job, 26. He goes, he told me to tell you to trim your mustache. <laughs> oh, and at the time, my mustache was probably, you know, like a a Bobby Galeone. After all this time, somebody finally asked you to trim the mustache? Right. It was probably a Bobby Galeone type of mustache. Yeah, the Freddie Mercury going on. Right. There you go. He told, he told me he told me to like tell you to trim the mustache. So I said, yeah, yeah, whatever. But we also, we yep. got a unit for that. And we were also at the 8th Alarm on 107th and Broadway, where we had 10 floors of fire in this massive you know, Upper West Side building. Oh, I think Hank was talking about. Is that the one that started in the uh, compact to shoot and shot out? It's, no, it started and it was like a U-shaped courtyard and they, they were renovating the building and they had scaffolding uh, in the front and it started in the scaffolding. All right. All right. Actually, we were out of service from a previous job. 16 Truck was in our quarters and 16 went to the job in our place and we quickly, you know, went back into service. I, I don't know. We went on the second Cap. or third alarm. Cap, who's the guy in the middle there? I can't. I can't remember his name. He's Ralph. The, he's from Ralph. Right? Ralph Bidiello. He's in Rescue Four. I could not remember. I'm looking right. at. Him. Like, I oh, Ralph, great. Right. Freaking name. I like Ralph. Former Marine. Yeah, he's good. No nonsense. Former that, Marine. I went calling little. Maybe. Yeah. Short guy. Challenged. Look at me calling somebody short. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. wide. It's relevant. It's all relevant. It's the short, it's the short guys. You always the two right. guys are six five. It's all right? relevant. But you know what? I I love 26. They 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 were so classy. We used to have in Christmas time the Christmas party we would have would be the officers' party for the men. Ah, I like it. All right. And the officers would all cook, bring something in, and there was a little uh, <laughs> catering or room for rent in, uh. above some bodega on 115th Street. And uh, we would be partaking in there. <laughs> all right. And actually, what I put on one of my notes, because Louis wanted some funny stuff. When I went to 26, I was on medical leave. I had had my knee operated on while I was in 150. So it, it took longer to heal. So it was probably at least a month or so before I got there. And they're probably wondering, you know, who the F is this guy? My first 24 in 26, we end up in the fifth alarm on Teeman Place up uh, near 125th Street. 40 truck was first, though. And when we come back, when we get on, right before we get on the rig, they go, hey, Lou, welcome to Harlem. Nice. <laughs> right, welcome to Harlem. But it was great. Did you have a Harlem sunrise? I don't think you had fires like that anymore. Yeah. You didn't have vacant buildings really up there. Yeah, yeah. Right? It wasn't that that type of thing. Well, I was actually looking at the time that you would ask. So you stayed there until... Like just, uh, I stayed there till 9 11. 11. I stayed there till 9 11. Things I got, started to change right, out right after that. Oh, actually. no. Wait, Kevin, you best son, send your son out for something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm empty. I'm empty. I'm empty. Oh, my Have God. A bottle of whiskey's got. I'm I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you something. Have him use that very expensive car insurance, Kevin. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you something over. No, I, I was there till, uh, till uh, 9 11. All right, the day of 9-11, right, I was putting my kids on the bus stop, you know, and obviously we all saw or looking at it, and I ended up uh, meeting two guys, Danny Grogel, who went to Rescue 4, and Eddie Roberts, the senior man of 26, and also the best chauffeur I had. And I was in officer for 20 years. Eddie Roberts was the best chauffeur I had. But I met them up in Comac, and we drove in, 
And, uh, and I remember telling Charlie Roberto, who just retired, who spent 20 years there in somebody's promotion. I said, Charlie, we put a table out because we didn't know what to do. Each house was autonomous. Another good word. Right? You had to run your own place. Mm. We put a table out in front, right? Right, right in line with the apparatus doors. We put the day book there, people coming from all over. But what I remember vividly, and I remind Charlie of that, and he said, I forgot that people walked from the Trade Center who were caught in the collapse to 125th Street to get the Metro North because the subway was yeah. shot down. Right. They were like those pictures you see with the people right. covered with dust. Yep. They were covered with dust. Wow. All right, and I spent, was that Tuesday? Tuesday, Wednesday night, we went down there, the 26th 26 went down there, right? We were there all night. I stood on the pile at night. I'm looking at pieces of the exterior skin of the towers impaled in the Winter Garden Theater. Mm -hmm. And I said, it looks like a nuclear explosion. Yep. And we left that morning and we we're on Spring Street in Houston. And there's a job over in Alphabet City. And I get on the park <laughs> radio and I tell them we are available. <laughs> 26, take it in. Uh, take it in. Oh, my take God. Take it in. It's in That's the projects great. over there. Who's first due? 133 truck. Holy shit. Wow. Is first due. That's good, right? So it's, pro it's probably the only time that 26 and 133 have or will ever run in together. And also... <laughs> I had to preface my 150 time. When I was in 150, there was no 133. Right. 98. 70 out. was still an engine. Right. So the landscape was much, much different fire-wise. Yeah. Much different. Right. So uh, you get promoted right after uh, 01, right? Right. And you go back to the 15th division. Well, not not quite. And I sent you a promotion picture uh -huh. from 9-11 because I got promoted that Sunday. And I think I got home from 26, I that think. That was the captain, right? Or the chief? Who was captain. That? Captain. The captain. Right, I was lieutenant 26. No, no, no. I'm saying you were with, in that picture, you were with somebody. Uh... I was with my wife and children. So I, I, I don't know. I have that picture either. Yeah, I thought I sent that to you. Send but me a lot of captain. But you know, my kids were young. My daughter, my daughter was nine, and she's twenty-eight now, and a teacher in the Hicksville School District. Uh, but getting proof, I got home that Thursday. That Thursday night, a friend of mine, Danny Thompson, who was Lieutenant Fifty Three Engine, who was very close to me on the captain's list, called me and said he got a call. We're getting promoted, and I forget who called me, and he goes. Just come to put down to Metro Text Sunday. We're not doing anything. He calls me back an hour later. He goes, we're having an outdoor ceremony. Invite everybody. <laughs> and they had a worldwide ceremony. People from California were calling me. Hillary and Schumer were the two senators, state senators. Oh, shit. They were there. Uh Oh, what a lovely pair. But you know what? <laughs> Easy, steady, steady. You know Sorry. What? Sorry. The whole thing I can't, sucked. I can't. The whole thing <laughs> sucked. You know, I, I I I left I left 26. It was terrible. Yeah. It was terrible. So I spent three weeks down down at the site. Right. And they want they asked me. And operations was running everything then. There was no being assigned to divisions. And I, I was assigned to operations. And they asked me to do global positioning of fire department victims. 
and they were going to give me some sort of GPS device. And I said, you know what? I, I, I looked at the whole thing that was going on down there, and I'm talking to demolition engineers from across the country, and they're telling me we may not be able to go past ground level because if the bathtub wall collapses, the subways are going to be flooded up to 125th Street. And I realized what they needed was what they got, which was the biggest cranes in the country. And unfortunately, it became a construction operation. And I says, no, nah, just put me back in the field. But they put me into Midtown. Ew. And I'm working in 22 and 13. I'm working in 4 and 54. And it got enormous. When I was in 4, the Queen of Jordan, oh. who's an American, came to visit the firehouse. <laughs> I don't know and if I'm working those it, 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 was, it was too much. Yeah, I don't think I can. And a good friend of mine, one of my best friends, John Paolillo, actually his wife, Donna, and my wife, Christine, were best friends before Donna met her husband, John, and Christine met me. And he died at the Trade Center. And it was at his memorial in late October on the North Shore of Long Island, Mike Weinlein. Mm -hmm. who was then an assistant chief who was oh, our Proby in 59 truck, asked me, he goes, we're reassigning officers. It is where, time would you, where would you like to go? And I says, well, if you're asking me, Mike, back to that circle. Mike. I, Mike. <laughs> I'd Not like Chief Wildlife, Mike. <laughs> well, he was our Proby. I know. He is <laughs> like Proby <laughs> Pete. <laughs> right? Look, didn't say I said, I got my helmet. I got my I helmet. I said I would like to go to the 15th. And boom, the next week I was on the order, but it was meaningless to where I worked because I worked in for two years. And I kept in, when I first got promoted. I got it right here, kid. 57 different fire companies you worked in. Yep. And, and five, five battalions. battalions and five boroughs. Boroughs. When I got promoted to lieutenant, I started a notebook and I recorded every tour I worked as an officer, every report I forwarded because chiefs would call me. Chief Jockabowski in the 15th I would know. call me. Jocko would call me. He goes, Where's the report I asked you for? I go, Chief, hold it. <laughs> Let me look at my notebook. He goes, what do you mean? I, I go, Chief, I've kept a notebook of every tour I worked as an as a officer. Every report, fire, problem that I sent. I boom, boom, boom. Right there. All right. So I, at one time, went back and looked at all these companies but everywhere I went, I was in 80 truck in Staten Island. Hey. They lost somebody. Oh, I was in 251 engine. 251? 251. I used to live there up the block from them. Yeah, in in Glen Oaks. I lived in Glen Oaks Village. Right? Yeah. They lost somebody. The two years were like dog years. <laughs> it, it, it was so, enormous. It was off the chart. All right, and then somebody and called me up. So, wait, wait, wait. Somebody calls him up. Somebody <laughs> called me up. I've never done this before. <laughs> they, they go. My, you know, who was it? Was it Mike? Want, it was a senior man <laughs> in 175 truck. Let I thought go. it was Mike Weinlein. I don't know. Let me go. Mike is a good friend of mine. I know. I All right. That. Let me go to my timeline. Oh, and I wait. In, in my covering... In Manhattan, I'm in 53 engine. The, the night of the concert of New York. I remember that. I was there. We get called down to the Trade Center. There was a fire in the Deutsche Bank building. Mm. Hmm. 12th floor. 
Al Hay is the chief. And again, here's the circle. Al Hay came from 120. Al Hay sent me his kid. He's the deputy. Jimmy Monahan from 120 is the battalion chief. The standpipe system is out. They have us in one of these construction buckets with the crane, with the line, trying to extinguish the fire. Doesn't work. We end up using the life-saving rope, stretch it two and a half, up the exterior of the building oh, is an exterior standpipe and extinguish the fire. When we had the second Deutsche Bank building and lost the two brothers, the first thing I did was email Al Hay and say, do you remember when we were there? Here's to you, Squid. All right. Oh. To the squid. Thank you. All right, wait, let me go to the timeline now. I'm done, I'm dry. To the videotape. I have to go to the videotape. (laughs) Go to the videotape. All right, but I went to 175. All right, one of the senior guys called me up. How would you like to come here? I said, sure. You know, and I'm there for a couple months. I think I'm going to become the next captain. Jerry Dabrowski was there for like, 10 years, you know, Jerry, Jerry left after 9-11, as a lot of people did. And I think I'm going to become the next captain of 175. And lo and behold, the captain of 332, Frank Johnston, decides to come across the floor. So John Iavolo, BC legendary, in uh, the 4-4, former captain of 42 when I was in 59, tells me, he goes, John, I have to endorse Frank. And Frank went through the Atlantic Avenue fire with 332, and I said, Chief, I understand totally, absolutely. All right, so boom, I'm out of of there. The next thing I know, I'm in 176. Staying in the the 4-4. Really having a tough time. I'm having yeah, a no, I tough time. Yeah, I feel bad I'm for you. I'm having a tough time. <laughs> but for some reason, the members and some of the officers from 176 and I weren't on the same uh, wavelength. Hmm, interesting. So a couple of things happened, and I think it was uh, probably April of 2003. And it was after a night tour, and Mike Quinn, deputy the 15th, and I have a long talk. And I come home, and I'm, I'm pissed off. So around 4 o'clock, I start having a couple of drinks. 8 o'clock, I am so livid. <laughs> I call the 15th division. Nice. And I tell, call and the I, division when you're drunk. Right. <laughs> and I tell them. Put me essay. No shit. All right. And they go, what do you mean? And Jimmy Esposito is is the the division commander. And it raised a lot of red flags. And I says, epic. Put me. I says, I'll cover. Because, again, what can they do to me? I just covered for two years. Right. Right? Uh, You know, it's no big deal. All right. So they put me essay. But. They sent me down to 321 for a vacation. All right. So, you know, I said, you know what? I can hang out here for a while. You were all alone. My mother grew up in Sheepshead Bay, and we ran into there. It it made me feel good about that. I Mm -hmm. said, keep me there after the vacation. Bang. The next thing I know, I'm in 120. Really? It was June, June of 2003. I'm in 120. So I UFO'd possibly the only covering captain to have UFO'd in 175. 176. And in 120. Then you get 120. I don't know how that happens. Right. I don't know. I I know how it happens. (laughs) Mike Weinlein? Never never done this before. Oh, Mike. Hey, Mike. (laughs) 
Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Chief, when you had three vodkas, that's usually how it does happen. (laughs) That'll do it. That'll do it. 120. And again, I didn't know that much about 120 in my Brooklyn time. So you got there in when? You got there in... I got there. I UFO'd in uh, June, right before there was a blackout then. So... Right, there was a blackout for yeah, a couple yeah, right, of days. Right, 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 right. Right, there was a blackout for a couple summer, of days. Right. I, re- I remember the blackout. Actually, I was ABC in the 4-4 for the day tour, and then I worked the night tour. Right, my, re- my relief came in. I went back to 120. We end up on Rutland Road, 9-4 in Rutland Road. A little two-story. We had a lot of these two-story... Flat roof connected. We call them two and twos. And they had a basement. So they, to some degree, it was three-story. And, again, there was three apartments. It was an illegal MD. We end up, us and the 4-4 Battalion on 9-4 in Rutland, fire roaring in the basement nice. with no engine. Ooh, bad. No engine. The people are outside. And remember, it's a blackout. The people are outside. There's 50 people screaming at me, where's the pumper? <laughs> Even I go know. like this. I turn around. I, it was like an epiphany. I thought about my father first. And I says, you know what? I'm born for this moment. I turn around to the people and I go, do you think? think you're the only people in Brooklyn who are having a fire tonight. Oh, nice. All right. So yeah, 227 (laughs) came and 227 was having their company dance that night. So it was all 231 guys. And uh, one of my favorite uh, fire officers, Mike Dawkins from 227 was working. All right. But that, that was my uh, start in 120. I didn't know if that was the spot for me. I liked the tower ladder. I liked the location. All right, because unlike it's a huge area. Some of the more southern companies, that would be (laughs) that would be on Belt Parkway all the time. We were south enough, but if you went down Pennsylvania Avenue. And went west, you had a hike till you got to Rockaway Parkway. Right. Or if you were working 170 and you went down Rockaway Parkway and you went west on the belt, you had to go to Flatbush Avenue, which is the furthest between, I think it's two and a half miles, Mm -hmm. come back up to Flatlands Avenue. It's a half an hour run. So we were south enough to bring us into Canarsie and East Flatbush right. where the work was picking up. And I liked who we ran in with. We went into Crown Heights. We went into Canarsie. We went into East New York. We, York went, up into Bu- we went up into Bushwick <laughs> on Bushwick Avenue. We went into Bed-Stuy. You went up to Bushwick to those, those shit bears, 108? We didn't go that far uh, up. Uh, no, we probably <laughs> rode in with. We probably uh, rode in with one. Then. We probably rode in with one seventy six up there. Uh, hey, right Cap, I wanted to. I wanted to show the guys the picture with uh, the, the 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 picture with the busiest firehouse. Where, oh where? yeah, go ahead. Oh boy. Right. Oh boy. So here I, you go. I, I smell well, the here, are the, here are the stats, uh, but I have not gotten a verification of this. All uh-huh. right. So there's a little asterisk. There's All a- right. So they, there could be an asterisk. <laughs> Go ahead. In 1971, mm-hmm. 120 did 10,989 runs. How much? 10,989 runs. They're the oh, only yeah. company ever to exceed. 10,000 runs. And supposedly, I'm, I'm gonna supposedly, research supposedly that. after their 10,000 runs, the 
four four went on the department radio and said that's one twenties ten thousand run. They said, Yeah, that's great. Tell them to stand by for their ten thousand first. <laughs> nice. All right. But did you have a shirt but, made up? But what? Did you have a shirt made up? It wasn't uh, no. Anyone. No, the newest shirt was oh, not Watkins Street, Wuhan Street, because oh, no. because I think uh, had twenty uh, guys get the COVID. Uh, we don't say that. All right, but to go back to this picture, <laughs> I thought they got like a free waffle line or something when they hit right? 10, to go bucks. to go back to this picture. <laughs> what some of the Sheffield Avenue people say in defense, one hundred and three had. 103 and 103 too. Two, right. But, uh, but 120 didn't really go past the train cut Van Sidren. 120 tended to stay on the Brownsville side, and 103 and 103 too were running around in their side, and their area is so big, especially going south that. Yep. Yeah, that, right. That's plenty for anybody. Right, right, right. You know what's incredible? Look at the guy in the back of that tiller. <laughs> Look at how he's driving that incredible. thing. Incredible. Well, again, Louie, we like the open cab tower. Look, he's waving the He's going to talk to the babes. Right, I used to like the open cab. I was going to yeah. the open cab. That, that, they were Max. They were one of the best rakes ever. Uh, Max was fast as hell, man. Yep. That That's what 94 was. 94 was a Mac... Uh, Show uh, show him the picture, Pete, of the uh, of one hundred and three. I know he, he he couldn't wait to show me that picture. Oh, uh, right. here we go. I said, there, there you go, mama <laughs> mia. There you. What? Wait, what's going on there? <laughs> uh, I thought they right? were relocated. He actually said we, no, we were. They needed fuel. All right. They need, they needed fuel. Oh, they're they're All right, but Louis, let me let me tell you my one hundred and three story. Why oh, I was girl, a, you why said why I was why I was a covering captain. All right, this is before. I ingratiated myself into the 4-4 battalion. Because, again, even though I was assigned to the uh, 15th, you know, I was up in the Bronx. I was everywhere. So it was inconsequential. It was actually administrative more than anything. But I'm doing a vacation in 103. And I'm coming in for the night tour. And Eddie Curley is the officer in 103. And right. Eddie, Eddie's an old 227 guy. Mm -hmm. And I come in, and I guess I go in the kitchen first to get some coffee. They're mopping the floor. Nice. You know, it's, it's like like 4.30, <laughs> 5 o'clock. I go, they're mopping the floor. They're cleaning the table. Listen, it's not, don't, don't stop them. Man. I go, <laughs> what are they doing? This is 29103. I go upstairs. I go, Eddie, something's wrong here. He goes, what do you mean? I go, they're downstairs mopping the floor. I go, they used to throw the food, clean the table on the floor. For, for dinner, just slide it off the table on the floor. I said, what the after they're doing? All right. I was astonished. Absolutely astonished. But I had a good time there. Oh, that's I it? Liked, I yeah, like their, you had, they have a, the they have a good more. response area. It's all about response. It's all about geography. Well, it's like real that? estate. Location, is, location, location. Where is 103? There you go. <laughs> Staten Island or something? Oh, that? so you like that. Now he likes that. Follow the smoke. Follow the smoke. smoke. Okay, you know what? 103 was embarrassed backing into our rig. They were cringing. <laughs> they were they were, were embarrassed. That's why I took a picture of it. Later on, <laughs> later on in my career, I used to carry a camera with me. All right. I didn't have that many pictures earlier on. I uh, so so when we we started actually because I got to 290 in, in December of 02, and you got there. So it was you, right? When you first got there, it was Larry Tompkins, right? Uh, Dennis, 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 was, Dennis Gordon. It was Dennis, Tommy Lasquadro. Oh, Tommy Lasquadro, right, 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 and Larry, yeah, and Larry, I, Larry, I, Larry okay. correct. Dennis, I never, wait, you I, know what? Dennis was. Dennis was almost done by then. Dennis spent 15 years there. Right, I, actually a couple I spent more years, 10. Right. They wore me out. It's dog years. <laughs> yeah, dog years. <laughs> dog, they, they wore, the projects wore me out. Hiking it up wore me out. Dealing with the public wore me out. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, it was. Oh, I know. 
know. The, you know, dealing with the elevators, you know, oh, dealing with the surrounding companes. Oh, oh, right. They, they, it wore me out. And so I tell Dennis, I don't know how you spent 15 years. My last chauffeur in 120, Larry Schneckenberger, he was the senior manager. So I went through a lot of chauffeurs because they kept on leaving. I had Sean Nealon, who went to Rescue 2, Richie Miranda, who went to Rescue 1. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up, with, I had Will Hickey, got promoted, and I, I said, finally said, well, I'm taking the senior man, Larry Schneckenberger, and uh, he spent 28 years there. I don't know how he did it. It's uh, it's not. I think uh, it's well, not I, easy. I came on with Danny Wetzel, so I know Wetzel was in the engine for a long time. Then he went to the truck. Probably yep. by the time you got that, right? Yep. Because yep. when he I got was, the tonight, the the truck. Truck. well, Dan, Dan, Danny's father, right, was there. His, was a fireman in 120. His grandfather too, right? A that I don't know. A lieutenant oh. in one. Oh, we lost him. Oh shit. Back, where is he? Oh, it's his it's his interwebs. You know what that means? <laughs> what is Pete, that? I just came up with a brilliant idea. Just send it to you. Uh send it to me. In so, a private chat. Listen, we gotta have I put you post that in the chat. Oh yeah. So a you know what I'm gonna do? Listen, I'm gonna remove Ruffy. him and then he'll come back. Ruffy, right. a yeah. call a call to the bullpen. Ready? Yeah. We're going to have Fat Daddy Ray, Hank Belay, and Chief Ruff. I saw Ruff. it. I saw it. Chief Ruff. Ruff. Yeah. That's, that's the way to do it. All right. Oh, we can my God. <laughs> He's You're coming back. I just, his, his, uh, somehow, his, I think his web is down because I saw his, the little He's spinning. He's probably in a pure, absolute panic because <laughs> uh, he, he's, he couldn't even click on the link to uh, – is he back on? Let me call him up. No, no, I, I just tossed him so he can come back in. Let's see. Mamma mia. I, he actually had really decent, uh, what's it called, uh, internet and everything like that. What, so. what do you got, kid? <laughs> okay. Okay, bye, bye, bye. Sell, sell. Ah. Okay. <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> what happened? Run, run, run. Think his battery died on the on the laptop. I thought so. There you go. <laughs> what the? You go. Plug it in for Christ's sake. Man. We made him change the, the wireless headset for that reason. You, you know, know what happened? Uh, he was talking so slow as internet couldn't oh, catch I, up with him. Oh, hold on. Here he comes. Here he comes. Ah, we got him back. I told you. <laughs> I told you. you. See what happens when you mess with well, one I'm a mid-level hacker. <laughs> I, All right, but to get back to Danny Wessel. His his father is a legendary, legendary Watkins Street uh, fireman. And when when his father was dying, his father had cancer. He's eighty two, mm -hmm. and his father his father was also a deacon. And his father knew he was dying. He told Danny, "I want Watkins Street to bring me home," no. and I had the honor. Of being one of uh, Eddie's pallbearers. That was just. Was that recently? How long? Ago no, was it? no. That 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 was. Jesus Christ. Well, I've been retired for almost seven years. All right, and I also had the honor to be one of Frank Pampalone's uh, pallbearers. And I told Will Hickey, one of my ex-members, who's now a lieutenant in one fifty-five, when I die, I want Walker Street to bring me home. But mm -hmm. Eddie died, Jesus, got to be 15 years ago. I, I would say that that house is probably one of the most, uh, you know, tradition-wise. Yeah. You know, I, you know, the, well, it, it, reminded, yeah. it reminded me a lot of 26. Right. The alumni, they have a great, great right. uh, history. You know, right. And also 26 is in the middle of, uh, excuse me, in the middle of the project's just like uh, 120 yeah. is. Right, right, right. All oh, right, guys, but yes. yes. 120 goes to projects. What? 120 goes to projects? <laughs> <laughs> wait, Kevin. Wait, what's a project? The projects could wear out Mother Teresa. I know it, bro. She would say, send me back to Calcutta. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. It, uh, demanding. It, well, it, you know what it is, is people don't, you know, uh, if, if you just took a little snippet, and I think that's kind of what happens nowadays, too, is you could take a little snippet of what somebody could say, right? But unless you've dealt with it for years and years and right. years, I, I did it for right. years, and I was at the point where I was, you know, tired. It's just, it's exhausting. It's, you know? exha it's exhausting mentally, besides, and it's certainly exhausting physically. Right. And, so, I, and I, I did it till I was 60. Right, I retired my sixty-one. Just crazy, and it's and it's. But I, well, John John Vigiano once said, "Should you be sixty years old crawling around burning apartments?" Yeah, I know. Right? Probably not. Yeah, no, man. no, not not in today's environment. All right, and there were so many impediments in the projects, starting with getting in the main entrance. They had these massive stainless steel doors with locks mm -hmm. right they were outward openings so that made the uh fe process more convoluted and that that's just to get you into the lobby now you have to recall the elevators does fireman service work well probably not. I, I did an elevator emergency s survey I don't know, around 2008, 2009. Eddie Ferrier was the chief in the 4-4. He liked all these different projects. So I says, well, you know what, chief? We're going to do this. And I set up a clipboard because everything's on clipboards in the office with a log. And I wanted everybody to, uh, I guess, enter the runs and the disposition when we went out for elevator emergencies. So I did eight months. I started on January 1st. And in eight months, we did 800 elevator emergencies. Oh my God. All right, so we were averaging 100 elevator emergencies. Yeah. A month. A month? A Holy month. Shit. And they all have a very distinct scent those oh, elevators absolutely. they do projects. Yeah. So now I used to tell Bobby Higgins, because if <laughs> I was working with Bobby, I said, yeah, oh, everything's good. I know everything's good from uh, that end because there's nobody better than Bobby Higgins. We got a picture of those two people. Right. And, and if, uh, if we got both elevators down in fireman service, the engine took one, we right. took the other, and when we were going up, I would say we are halfway there. All right. We'll get to the two floors below. The truck will go up there. The truck still has to deal with FB. So the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking to get to the building, get to the inside the lobby, See if the elevators work, because both elevators could be out of service. Now, how long are you going to wait? And I got a truck company from Sheffield Avenue who's looking to climb over me. Who's that? They may start hiking it up the stairs. How long am I going to wait in the lobby? What floor is it on? Right, right. How many floors could I hike it up? It Nick. used to be 12. Yeah, I'm, I can't do that. It anymore. wasn't 12 anymore <laughs> in my mid-late 50s. Cap, uh, Ray Seely said one Otis 8 when he was in 108. Right? Okay. So show, show him the dog, Pete. Uh, it's not, my, boy, not the dog. dog. My boy. Oh, my boy. His son. His my son. son. His son. Well, I, we, I, were one, two, one, we were 1-2-0. One, oh. O oh, for Otis. <laughs> that is Otis. <laughs> oh, mommy. Uh, you know what, Otis? That's my boy, Otis. That's the and Otis. we had Otis for 13 years. He was 15. That's awesome. We were down in Florida. This is three years ago. January 20th of every year is 120 day. Right, right. right. 120. And the 120 brothers gather in some establishment and since i've been in florida for the last six winters i'm not there 
we had to euthanize uh, Otis on 120 day. Mm. Think of that irony. He had two seizures in 12 hours. We had to euthanize him. So my boy Otis yeah, it's died tough. on 120 day. I, he was named after one, two Otis. One, two Otis. One, two Otis, my boy. Well, you know what's happening, Cap, too? You know, I uh, I left 103 around 2008, and the work had already started to change a little bit there, too. You know, so it was you're still doing the running, but you're kind of catching a little bit less work, you know, to balance that off, right? You right. Know? So, you know, I can't. Well, if, if I'm not going to fires. Right, exactly. It's tough. I, I, I'm not going to do all sorts of running. And I'm not doing 3,000 runs of emergencies in the projects. Yeah. I be. did that because it was to go to fires. And when I got to 120, 19 guys from that lieutenant's list were promoted. So I had every, and I think Proby School was a six-month uh, gig that, at the time. Right. Right. I was getting two and three Proby's. At a pop, when they graduated, I had 29 guys on my roster at one time. I had four double groups. I spaced them out so there was only one double group per time. Right. All right. But I always said that the group chart has a way of uh, naturally thinning itself. Yeah. Well, right that, through medical leave, yeah, vacation, that, that hurt, that's what, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're back to square one. I went through all this rotation thing with young, when uh, Vanessa was uh, sending these kids out uh, for two of their three years of probation when I was in 150 and also 26. So I was getting these young firemen and the kids were great. They, they were fantastic. They, they do anything you wanted, but I'm working in busy truck companies, and you alluded to earlier, you know, this this is the moment of truth. When they're throwing the kids out the window at four in the morning, this is the moment of truth. And this is not the, the moment. This is not a teaching point anymore. And you had to go through the cycle every year of teaching these guys. And it put a lot of pressure on the officer. The mm -hmm. officer became the de facto iron guy. Mm. I don't want to force the door. Yeah, right, right, right. I would tell them, I'm not getting involved unless I have to. Or if I had two engine details, <laughs> we would go right to the front door of the firehouse of 120, get the irons out, get the hydro ram out, do a 10-minute FE thing, and the same thing. But it puts a lot of pressure on the company officer, and it did with getting all these probies. And all the probies I got were very well-connected probies. I had right. Al Hayes' kid. Al Hayes' kid was my last probie. He was yeah. a former Marine. He was a Marine for five years because they didn't let him leave uh, after 9-11. But they were tremendous kids, and they were there for a reason. I would always ask them when they made the, came up to see me in the office, who do you know? Well, I don't know anybody. I go, <laughs> yes, you do. You don't just need a hook to get into 120. You uh, need a crane to get into 120. It, no I doubt. said, I'll find out. What, and I uh, found out. But they were great. Chief Bro's son, right? Yes. He's tremendous. Right. Well, he's one of the newer group. Right, Most of I mean. my guys have gotten promoted to uh, lieutenant. lieutenant. Brian Cross, Dennis Cross's kid. Right, right, right. Right. He's he's in 133. Will Hickey's in 155. Hickey, right. He's yeah, a good they, they, like Probably Patty Connolly, who was a lieutenant yeah, in yeah. 231 and 120, is in. Uh, he's bouncing around the 13th. I had my retirement party in uh, Patty's place. Yeah, I like looking at the. Um uh, the 120 website, they have some good old school pics in there. And then they, they also have like a little section where they have the father, son. Yes. You know, the guys who yes. work, there, you know, and Bill Cerevino's kid is a superstar. He sent him to the engine. 
and everybody would call me up. I'd like to send my son there. All right, Steve Garrity's kid is there, who's right. a superstar. Right. And I talked to Steve. He goes, I want him to send him there. I'd like to send him to the engine. I says, listen, that that's fine. And I condone. No, I, I'm very agreeable with that theory. But Bobby Higgins had a very strict pecking order for who's going across the truck. And I said, your son is going to get to the bottom of that list unless you have mega weight. If you could get your son to the truck, do so. Right. Do so. You know, Look something against the engine. Do so. <laughs> they even put us on the uh on the Walking Street uh, website. There you go. Website, there you Captain. go. We must Captain be drunk at that. Here on the nice. Game of in podcast. Come on, nice. mommy. Look at that there guy. you go. Thanks, oh, Thank you. Wait. 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 Who knew the squid oh. Oh, was so popular? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send you a bottle, yeah, pal. Are you good? All right. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. But no, one one twenty was. You know, I spent ten years there. I would have spent. I would have went to my sixty fifth birthday. I retired when I was sixty one, right before Hurricane Sandy. I spent in August of two thousand twelve. We had a job on Blake Avenue in the low rise projects. All right, so it's six stories. You have to hike it up. It's 90 degrees out. Love it. It's me and Bobby Higgins. Three-bedroom three apartment. Of course, it's the back bedroom. The people are in the hallway giving me the point. <laughs> they used to point to me. I tell them I don't speak point. <laughs> All right? They give me the point. Um... All right? Obviously, it's in there. I come out. Jockabowski is working. I love Jocko. Jocko looks at me. He goes, are you all right? I go, I'm a little winded. I didn't, I knew I didn't feel good. One of my lieutenants, Rob Brown. Love Rob. Right? And, and is a cardiac physician's assistant. Right, yep. does a lot for the job. Right, and runs, runs the New York Firefighters Heart and Lung Association. Actually, he was with me. He was from 58 Engine, so I know him from a long time. That's why he was there, and he was with me in the job on 110th Street where Cassano said, from your mustache. Mm. All right, he's on the unit citation with us. And I went to see him in October, right be a couple of days before Hurricane Sandy. And I live in West Islip again, right down from the water. So I remember Hurricane Sandy. The water stopped four houses from me. And I went to see him. And lo and behold, I am in eighth fifth. Don't know it. Really? Fighting fires. He goes, you can't go to work. I said, F this. I'm going to work. He calls up my wife, who's an RN. It's outside hospital. He goes, Christine, can't go to work. I never worked in the firehouse again. That was it. That was it. Right? We were doing yeah, well, That's the we, best. Uh, we, well, we, you know what? But I would have went four more years, did 40 to my 65th birthday. Yeah, if you didn't drop dead on the job. So if I didn't drop right. dead, right? I retired, oh. I retired a year later, the same day as you, Kevin. Yep. Same day, same day as you. It worked out, I guess, the way it should. It's if I would have went to 175, I probably would have lasted 40 years. But at the end of the day, it, it is what it is. You know, I, I sent you a picture of me in the hospital being cardio burned at December of 2003. That one I got. Right. Uh, and unfortunately... Two years ago, my AFib came back. I had an AFib ablation in NYU Hospital um, in Manhattan, which solved it. Actually, I see my cardiologist yesterday. She goes, excellent. Your EKG is excellent. I go, thank 
effing God. <laughs> well, that, speaking of thank effing God, there was there was one run that you had there where the, the woman said, you know, thank God, thank God. And what what did you say? I tell them. You said, don't yeah. thank, well, it's it's one it's one of my three thousand emergency <laughs> runs in the project, which wore out Mother Teresa. I would tell them, ma'am, don't, don't thank God. God. Thank Ladder Company once more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we get to the the old school tip of the day, I was going to do it after, but I think that's a good segue. We'll go, Pete. Punch up the uh, the calamariisms. So this was a shirt or printout. That no, this this was a uh, a uh, I don't know, banner clipboard. Oh, okay. uh, I don't know. All right, a board. A board at my retirement party at Connolly's Corner. <laughs> A little so bit out to Patty and his brother. Right, so, so these were the top ten. Uh, this, is, this is from my guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, right? You, you, you right. Uh, Cap. Well, the first one, thank God. The second <laughs> one with the elevators never work. I don't remember saying that. Uh, the Chiefs were always prompting us. Number three. Hold on, hold on. Number two is one of my favorites. It says the elevators never work. This is ridiculous. And then you say, well. Man, <laughs> Let's put it this way. If you urinated on your computer, you'd think it would still work. But wait, what did Pro B what did Pro B ah, say heard. about Holy the uh, the unique great. odor? Actually, yeah. there was a one of the great you know, uh, I won't use his name, but he, he was a tremendous fireman in uh 120, he became a lieutenant in 108. He used to get the little uh, uh, urinal uh, discs for deodorizing and throw them in the elevator. Oh my Did god! That, that, All right, yeah, that, it was. It was you know what? A urinal cake. A urinal cake. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's it's really dehumanizing because people were defecating in the stairways in the project. Yeah, no. it, yeah and when you try, can... right? When yeah. you try to explain it to people. Oof. Who've never experienced inner city life? It, it's it's two distinct you know points in life. It's actually shocking. The first time you experience it, it's, it's it hits you. It, it's very shocking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. PJ is no good. All right, All right. What we got number five, right? Oh, number five. I'm sorry. All right. Well, number three, the Chiefs always prompting you. I got to get up there first. <laughs> you know, we had a CO run in the projects. The CO meter is, it's like an 800. I'm in the stairways. We finally locate it. I bang on the door. 30 people are in the apartment. They have a charcoal barbecue. They're barbecuing inside. The apartment has, it's like 100 degrees. Oh, shit. Right, uh, it's it's astonishing. It's astonishing. So, chief, when I find out, I'll let you know. All right, uh, water leaks. One twenty truck. To right, Brooklyn. because it'd be pouring all over. I would go into the building. These people would look at me. They go, "How does this happen?" I would go, "Gravity." <laughs> they look at me. They go, "Gravity." I go, "Gravity." They'd go gravity because it's coming down. But it was constant. Or how long was it leaking? Two years. I, <laughs> like three in the morning. Three in the morning, you're going to call for that, right? Right. Number seven, I like too. That's a good right. one. Right. Yeah, well, uh, Louie understands. I could see we're a little the, light in the, the housekeeping. Right. The, the, state of, the state of affairs uh, yeah. in some of these places. Yeah, the girl's like, I got a gas leak in here. I come in here. I'm like, no, 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 that's not gas. That's funk. You right. A little Biangaline. I'll get a little bleach in here. You know. Or or it was a Collier's Mansion, which I, I don't think you use that term anymore. And I would tell them that uh, if you have a fire in here, it would take you out in a body bag. So, so Cap, number eight. 120, continue it to the box. Is that ask you you tried to get on to a... Like no, a that that's after going uh, the third uh, response <laughs> to uh, 301 Sutter for the same <laughs> elevator that we shut the power off uh, two hours ago. Uh, Brooklyn, but I could and see I tell him we were there already. 
I, I said we were there twice. I used to no, say, it's an abusive okay. response. No, it's ridiculous. It it's, is, no, it no. Why, why are they sending us out three times in two hours? The, what I would do, oh, I would get on the horn. The solution to the elevator problem in a 20-story building is to get the elevator mechanic <laughs> yeah, the right. housing there. Right. We, we're right. not the elevator mechanic. Right. Well, we are, but we're not. We're not. No, we're not. Right. Number nine is good. Well, Doc I, I don't know if I said it quite like that, but I was at the, uh, medical, the medical office with Dr. Manor with an orthopedic issue, <laughs> and she was putting me on light duty, and I had, I don't know, I had 28 years on the job. I said, Doc, I've never been on light duty. I'm putting on like I had, actually I had a blowout with her, a tremendous blowout. And the next time I seen her it was right after Easter. I, I brought her in the Easter chocolate bunny, and she. I said, Doc, I'm sorry, I apologize. And Doc, she goes, Well, I'm a Jew. We don't celebrate. I said, You know what, Doc? Every, everybody needs a chocolate Easter. Yeah, bunny. yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Put it, well, anyway, nine says, Doc, putting me on light duty is like taking Joe DiMaggio out of the lineup. <laughs> they broke my streak. I do. Ah, they nine. broke my streak now, of full duty. Now I got it. They broke my streak of full duty. How dare that? And then you had a uh, a satanic ritual. Yeah. Four, four twenty. What's going on, John? In the, in the closet. Chief Chickens. <laughs> we seem to have a chicken oh, oh santeria that's how, what that is lewis I how do you explain this to the chief <laughs> I've, had few, I've had a few of those In and the, the woman told me this is satan no, no. she said no 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 yes she said this santeria is, this different said, than that's Spain. pete that's what she told me i that's i right. said what the F are you doing? <laughs> That's what she said, Santa Rea. Yeah, so it, yeah. just so everybody knows, four and six was, uh, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Like right I, don't wanna, I don't want to go there. I'm, put, I, go. I'm politically correct. Wait, okay, Louie. Yeah. I didn't even engage in our 103-120 rivalry. What do you mean? There's no rivalry. It's all love. All uh, right. All love. We're in the summer of love. It's Amen, the brother. <laughs> love. Yeah. Chaz and the getting salty. Well, spirit. wait. I can't end it then. Just one, one 103. It's actually a 290, story. And we have, a, two hours. we have a job in the projects. And the captain of 103 is working in 290. We're, per, we're first two. Go ahead. All right. So we're crawling in, boom, 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 doing whatever. I turn around, and there's the captain of 290. Or, uh, 103. He's in 290. 103, working 290 in the fire apartment. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? Oh, I'm sorry, Pete. That's all right. You're good. All right. Oh, no, no, so away, man. The fire's worry. out. I have to maybe it's one, one or two rooms. So it wasn't tremendous. But we end up in an argument in the hallway of the fire apartment. The chief intercedes wasn't a good idea. It almost came to blows. What year was this? Do you remember what right? year? Nah, don't remember. Bobby Higgins was working. Bobby Higgins afterwards tells me the people in the apartment said these firemen are crazy. <laughs> They're not lying. So if the locals in Brownsville <laughs> <They're crazy. laughs> think the firemen are crazier oh, than they are. Oh my God, that's funny. That's, that's funny. saying something. That's funny. But that's funny. if you don't defend your turf, man, listen, yep. that's what it, it is always. You know, if you don't, you might as well put a lock on the door. Well, I, just ban me. I, I would say for myself, and you know, again, every place has their way, and I it think got it was better. Less, right. I was going to say it was a lot less than right. what I heard. It got. I, I never think really the, had many issues. I think the engines, because that area in Brooklyn and going into Bed Stuy is very engine centric. It's a lot more. 
Yeah, it's 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 been much better. All right. I just want to let you remember, I worked in Harlem. It is very respectful. Right. After you. No I way. just I don't want other people's boxes going after my boxes. Right. I want all. my box. I understand. That's all. I used to stand outside waiting for 103. <laughs> all well, right. We, we never had and, and it was anything. It was a message that I was sending that we're respecting your boxes because I'm a respectful guy. I felt the same way. Yeah, good. Good. Summer of love. Summer of love. Yeah, I love summer of love. You, you know right, what? Pete. You know what though? We're, you know where we're at, right? What time yeah, is it, Pete? It's a very special time of night that we would like to call oh, the old school <laughs> tip <laughs> of the day. Okay. This I wrote today. That's on page 19. This is page <laughs> 19. And this is my, as Louis said, something from other people. And my tip of the day is late is too late. And this is firematic centric. All right. And I put a list. Row frames. Cock loft exposures. If you're the second new truck, you better know where you're going. And I remember being on Atlantic Avenue near Pleasant Place, near Rockaway Avenue with 176. Three frames going. We're second do. I looked. Where do I need to be? I know I need to be in exposure because if I'm in the fire building in second do, I'm an absolute moron. But I look. Which exposure? Boom. And I went to exposure too. And the engine officer said to me, how did you know? But I just knew. It was intuitive. I just knew. Okay. All right. My second one, top floor fires and H types. All right. If you haven't thought about H-types, and again, we really don't do them in Brooklyn, but we had multi-wings up uh, towards 123, pulling ceilings, cock cloths, because if the fire goes to two adjoining buildings or apartments in a multi-wing building that they stretch 20 lengths for the first line, and you haven't identified it, guess what? It's too late. You're going to lose the top floor. All right, number three, one of my favorites in Brownsville, because we don't have taxpayers, roll down gates with occupied apartments above. Back to what I said a little while ago, when they're throwing the kids out the window at 3 in the morning, <laughs> and you're looking at this gate, and you're looking at the lock like you never seen it before. And you never thought about, we, right across the street from 120 was roll down gates. That was our roll call, walk to, how am I going to do it? Because the best thing you could do, the first thing you could do in that scenario is give the engine access to stick the line in there. The second thing, let's extinguish the fire and reduce the smoke condition. I like it. Okay, let's see. All right, getting into the project, the main, the main entrance, because the clock is ticking. And again, if you looked at this, that this is the first time you've seen it, it's too late yeah. because late is too late. Yep. Okay. And also the fire apartment door. Again, it's a progression in the project. Getting into the lobby, the elevators. Am I walking? Am I not walking? Did right. I ever think this scenario out? Well, when you finally get to the fire apartment door, you got to force it. Did I ever think about this before? Late is too late. All right. Like checking all the how many, how many you got there? We're gonna have to start charging you extra. <laughs> yeah, every tip. Go. How about checking all the equipment on the rig? This is my last one because if you need it, 
It better be checked. I was working in 301. We went down to 179th Street, the start of the F line. Some dope was sitting on the platform. The train came in, pinned his legs. 150 came with the airbags. Boom, 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 boom. Pushed the car from the platform. Boop, nice. right up. What happens if the airbags didn't work? That's something you got to practice, too. Late is too late. So that's my old school tip of the day. I like it. I like it. Nice. Thank you, sir. How Ruffy, like. You got something. Proby to Pete, about? you're the Proby. Do you like that? He you better check the I rig. Like. You better check the rig, kid. All right. So I can have myself. I have a few shout outs before we uh, end this baby. Uh, I just want to congratulate John McCoy, who is a member of Squad 288. Uh, he made a grab last year, and uh, he's uh, going to be getting the Gordon Bennett. So, really? Are they having metal day? It looks like it's going to be pushed back, uh, possibly to the fall. They're not sure. God bless them. Yes. Congratulations. Legit, you know, really, really legit. They have yeah, you know, this guy's outside taking pictures, so you see the whole thing. And Good, uh, I'm really happy for him. I'm proud of him. So I just want well, to Well, you know what, Lou? At the end of the day, it's all about life. We're here, yeah. we're here for basic functions to save lives. And that guy's walking around. I, I, I forgot to say dead. something, though, to go, go back early on in 94. The fire department was doing EMT training. And it was firemen training firemen. On your own time, you went in, and I became an EMT. And they didn't have CFRD engines. We were doing mouth-to-mouth. And we saved so many lives. And, and when I was in 59, we go to this run, and there's this Cadillac in an intersection. And there's a kid in the back seat, and he's got, got this huge gunshot wound in his stomach. Mm. And I looked at it. This kid's dying. This kid's like 9, 10 years old. He's dying. And since I'm the EMT and I'm trained and, and, I, and I got recertified twice, I went to police emergency service and got recertified with them once. The only firemen ever, ever that they let be, I guess, recertified in the EMS component. I put this kid in the back of a cop car with the mother we had the positive pressure resuscitator then. We went to Bronx Lebanon Hospital, and I saved the kid's life. For ten, 10 years later, when I first got promoted to lieutenant, New York Times calls me up. They said, we're doing a follow-up from this kid. There was a picture of me and a cop holding the kid with a huge hole in his chest. Oh, shit. So at the end of the day... This isn't blowing my horn. This is emphasizing why we are there. We're there to save lives. We're not the arbiter. I said this to my wife recently. All we're there is to give them a shot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? No, and, that's from, right. and from there, yeah, it's in somebody fact, else's hand. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's great. And it's in somebody way. else's hand. Yeah. All right, Lou. Started into chat. No, no, no. You, um, we should have talked about that. I didn't know that that, that was the case. Um, I also wanted to uh, thank Elwood Ir Irvin from uh, Lynchburg, Tennessee. He sent us a care package uh, for myself, for Kevin and Pete. Uh, bottles yeah. of Tell him to send Kevin some liquor. Uh, I'm <laughs> out. What the uh, I'm out. That stuff from Jack Daniels. I guess Jack Daniels is right there. So he sent us all sorts of stuff, flasks, all this stuff. So I wanted to thank him. That was, uh, we really appreciate that. Uh, next week on Monday, we're probably going to do either a back in the day or a uh, R2 cents. I have two things I'm working on. I'm going to check it with Kevin, see how it's going. And then uh, next Thursday, we have Keith. I'm not really sure how to say his last name. Nicolello from Dirty Truck. He just retired 40. Yes. Plus. Yes. We're going to have him on next. Uh, Excellent. Thing. Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful. He, One of the great senior men on the job. Good. Uh, good. Tell him I said hello. I will do so. Uh, and that's it. You got it, Petey kid. All right. Wait, I'm, I'm, Wait I'm, I'm how about the two to... pictures of some of the senior guys 
from 120 that oh, I say. Yes. yes, Cap. You want that to I wanted to finish oh, off with. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold, on. Hold on, boys. Because two on. of them didn't get to have a uh, a funeral. Um, one one second, boys. I got All it. Right, right here. I forgot. Yes. About Cap. I yes, would appreciate that if you could do it. If not, no. Well, we thank you it. very we much. It. It's we been an honor right to be here. Boys. Here. Absolutely. All right. Number one. The guy in the middle, right below me, I'm up on the stairs. This is Larry Schneckenberger's uh, retirement party, who's in the Hawaiian shirt or whatever. Dennis Gordon's on the left. Bobby Higgins is in there. Oh, that, in there. That's Pete McGreevy. Pete McGreevy is a legendary 120 lieutenant. Uh, and actually, I just read something online. He was in 122, Some maybe one of the plane crashes going back into probably the 50s to rescue somebody off duty. He was so beloved in 120 as a lieutenant, they painted his group number inside the apparatus door. And Chief Hay, the chief of safety, who drove him, said it was his greatest, it was his highlight of his career. He died in January. And if you could go to the next one, please, Pete. Yes, sir. All right. In the middle is Sal Russo in the white shirt, who was the 231-120 guy and became the captain of 108, 108. He was a lieutenant in 102 in Rescue 1. He died in April. And the guy in the picture to the right of him, all right, to our right is Seymour Schenker. And Seymour was a War Years 231 guy and drove the 4-4 uh, at the end and would go 4-4 Seymour to Brooklyn. <laughs> Seymour was a World War II Navy Pacific vet. Nice. And his captain, the captain of his ship, I think his name was McCann, won the Medal of Honor. Seymour wow. was the Best, sweetest, caring, giving person I've ever met. And his loss, he was buried in Pine Lawn again. Mm. No funeral. The Watkins Street guys lined up wow. to Pine Lawn. His son, Stephen, Seymour died of COVID. His son, Stephen, went to the facility assisted living he was on the second floor put a ladder up to see him wow. they called the cops the wow. cops came the suffolk cops came stephen said he's a world war ii vet and a fdny vet he goes what do you want me to do the cops said i do the same thing and drove away wow. right. how, how, they, old, how old was he cap he was 94. Oh, God bless him, All right, wow. and the guy to the left of Sal Russo is Georgia Guinan, whose son is Lieutenant 176. Right? And mm -hmm. the guy all the way to the right is Bob Beckworth, who was the guy with George Bush right, right, in 9-11 right. when he was in 164. Yeah, 164, Trump. Right, but I, I, I just wanted to pay homage to Seymour, Sal Russo, Georgie Guinan, and Pete McGreevy, because that, that you know, if pe people say to me, you know, well, 120, you did so much. No, I didn't. I didn't create it. I did what I was taught starting in the South Bronx. I am honored to be on this job. Mm. I was born in Kings County Hospital. Hey, Cap, I want to. I want to. New York City. I want to. I want to tell you what I, I spoke to a lot of guys from 120. Uh, you know, guys that I know that have gone through that. And you know, before we we close it out, I just want to say that honored. Every one of those guys said to me, you know, as much as they break your balls and uh, you know about the. I ball, didn't break my balls too much. <laughs> You know about the. I was the captain. The calamari. That's true. The calamariisms about the talking. You know, you talk, but they did say that that man would do anything for the firehouse. Absolutely. Like, and he, they said this not in just a passing thing. They said this man 
would yeah. really do anything, go above and beyond anything for that firehouse. Well, Pat Riley wrote a book years ago called The Winner Within, The yeah. Coach of the Knicks. This, this was, he this said was, either you're in or you're out. Right. This, this was the line that we'll end with. This was the one that stuck with me. It makes my hair stand up because this really just puts it. This is what you used to tell the probies or used to tell new guys when they came to the firehouse. Show them that you care before you show them what you know. And that is, that's the whole thing, right? If you care. Right. If they they'll break your balls and things will happen. But if you really care, then you're in. Right. Because now you want it. You could learn everything else. Lewis, that's if they, don't, if they don't break your balls, you're not in. Right. But yeah, if, you, right. if you care about being there and about the company and the tradition and the whole 20 is not an easy place to, to work. And Charlie Roberto said it's the price of admission, all the nonsense. That was that was from Wetzel gave me that one, and I told him I was going to tell him that you said that because to me, I'm, I would they, use that line. They, no, the line is I'll use they it. They want to know that you care before they care what you know. Ah, I like that. Better. That's the line. I like that. Nice. The guys nice. want to know that you are there, Absolutely. and the role of the captain is different than the lieutenant because the role of the captain is dealing with. Your guys dealing with the Chiefs. Right, 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 right. All uh, right. The lieutenants could take care of, you know, they could go do hydrants. <laughs> hey, right? But when you have a problem, <laughs> when you when you have a problem, they've lifted captains when the captains weren't working. Yeah. For the at, problem. At, at, right. at the end of the day, you're responsible. You're so responsible. You might not even be working and you're responsible. But when you have a problem, my wife has cancer. My child is sick. Will Hickey said to me the thing his wife has had cancer. She's constantly fighting for her life. Mm -hmm. Nobody's better than the Hickey family. Yeah, I like Will. His man. brothers in 235. Their family are wonderful. Mm. The things that you did for my family, I will never forget. Mm. But I will leave it with this. I am honored. 36 years. I wish I had got to do 40. Hey, but you guys, thank you. Thank you, my brothers. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming on, man. It was uh, good to see you. You still look good. I still, you yeah. still got the 68, 68, got some hair. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's my fine. cardiologist you're, you're, said you're, I'm good. Yeah, you're a class act, Cap. Even good, thank, you, thank you very you much. I appreciate those, it. Those As all of you. Honored class being act. here. All right, Absolutely. good. Petey, take us out, Petey. Okay, for all of you guys who are listening to us on iHeart, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever fine podcasts are heard, you should also be tuning into our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash getting salty experience. And guys, when you do tune in there, if you want this party to keep rolling, give us the finger, take your little digit. Hit the like, subscribe, the share button, and dudes, <laughs> we may be coming out to you. Uh, that's right. We're taking this bad boy on the road. We'll be in Philly in October for what show, guys? The Inter? Inter Schultz. Inter Schultz. So uh, we are taking the show on the road. Uh, also, guys, please make sure you head over to Instagram and go to at Salty Dog Inc. And... Uh, Take a look at Mr. Refrano's work there. He is always curating the best freaking pictures, uh, old school salty pics for firefighting. And also you get all your last minute, uh, up to the minute information on the shows there. And last but not least, check us out at gettingsaltyapparel.com where you'll find shirts like my wooden ladder shirt here or Mr. Bronx Bend over there or all the hats and all the cigar cutters and all the wonderful things. I do like the bunker gear toiletry bag myself. I'm going to come by the house, nice. Kevin, steal it. Um, but uh, yeah, and last but not least, guys, if you have a question for the show, questions and answers, email us at getting salty experience at gmail.com. And listen, make no mistake about it. I am utterly shit faced tonight. So <laughs> you, you, well, were, you. you were I might, I might have passed out a couple of times and not even known it, bro. I gotta send you a bottle. You had a, you had a few moments. Because <laughs> this whole You had a few moments. <laughs> it was like this. The, the audience looked over at you at one point, Kevin. You were like this. 
<laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Cap. <laughs> are we are we off? No, right Not now. Yet. <laughs> Not, Not yet. yet. All right, listen, I am serious though. We're gonna get a call to the bullpen with Fat Daddy, Old Man Mole, and Chief Bro. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be silly. And I promise not to drink myself, silly. So, all right, there we go. Take it out, buddy. All right, we'll see you at the big one, boys. Stay, Stay low, low and go. Be shot. Amen. Summer love. <laughs> yeah, summer, summer love. love. Right. Yeah. <laughs> see you. See you in Chaz, boys.